Hallelujah. Lord, we come here. We come in your name. We come in, in the name of Jesus. And we say, Lord, have mercy. We seek to do good, Jehovah. But evil is always present. But we're going to stand on your word. Because that word is a lamp to our feet this morning and a light to our pathway. We got to hide it in our heart, Jehovah, that we don't sin against you. Here we are seeking to do good, and you is always present. You're telling us today to stand still and know that you is God. When we get to such an around, oh, Father God, you said beside me there is no other. You said, my almighty and eternal God, and we know that is power, power in your name, Lord. Have your way, oh, Father God. There's a word from you today, oh, God. Let us be able to receive it in the name of Jesus. And I will cast to bring the word, oh, Father God, but nothing from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, oh, Father God, that somebody will say, Lord, have mercy. Here I am, dear Father God. What shall I do to be saved? In the name of Jesus. For you is our Father. You is our Father. You is our Father. You is our Father. Which are in heaven, Lord. How would be thy name? Your kingdom is already come. That will be done here on earth. As it is in heaven. Look at you gave us this day, oh God. You gave us more than daily bread. Somebody don't have something to eat today, oh God. We got food and all the good God. Lord, look on us this morning, oh God. Help us to pray for those, oh God, that cannot pray for the several, Father God. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Have our way, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we claim healing today. Deliver us from all sickness and disease. You know what we need before we ask. But you tell us to ask and ask it in your name. Give us, oh God, those things, oh God, that we need for your glory. Those things that has nothing to do with salvation. Father God, give us the strength to put them under the cross. We thank you now. We're not here for form or fashion. We are your children. This is progressive missionary Baptist church. Upon this rock, you can build your church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We claim victory today. Look on sickness and disease. Let somebody be delivered in the name of Jesus. Somebody shall be healed today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. Move out high mind and help us to be humble before you. So you can get the glory. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray the old God for the
Hopefully on last Sunday, the Lord spoke to us and allowed us to understand how he used a man by the name of Joab to get a wise woman from Tekeo to teach and impart to David through a juridical parable. And in that parable, she tries to press on David to allow his son Absalom to come back home out of exile. Mm -hmm. And as we study and examine that parable, it would have suggested to us that this wise woman was also trying to teach David and to teach us is that there's a big difference between God and us. Mm -hmm. And we learned there was some good news and some bad news of that. Uh -huh. Because the bad news is that none of us are like the Lord as we should be. Amen. But the good news is that God is nowhere like you and me. Amen. And that we ought to be grateful and appreciative Amen. that we serve a God who doesn't always operate yeah. with human characteristics yeah. and earthly qualities. And this wise woman told David that what separates the human in us and the holy in God mm -hmm. is that the Lord never runs out of options yeah. and that God never finds his hands tied. Yeah. Because what makes God almighty yeah. and what makes God superior and what makes God God is that God always finds a way to do what he wills to be done. Yeah. And somebody this morning ought to be able to witness, witness to that and say amen. Yeah. That you come to understand that there really aren't any robots with God. Hmm. There aren't any dead ends with the Lord. Uh -huh. There aren't any last chances with God. Yeah. Because we serve a God who is so powerful and so mighty. Yeah. That whatever it is that he wills to be done. Yeah. That he finds a way to get it done. Thank you, Lord. And y'all that's why the old saints used to remind us. Yeah. That the Lord will make a way somehow. Yeah. And it was suggested to us on last Sunday. That there are some things that the Lord always finds a way to get done. Uh -huh. Because number one, the Lord always finds a way to direct our paths. Amen. Because all of us wonder. All of us lose our way. Uh -huh. All of us go astray. Yeah. But the Lord loves us so much that he doesn't just let us wander outside of his will. Yeah. But he's that good shepherd who will lead the obedient 99 yeah. to chase down the disobedient one. Yeah. And that God has a way, way of bringing us through a blessing whether it be through blocking or breaking, to bring us back to where he wants us to be. And y'all, not only did we learn that God will direct our paths, but God will always find a way to deliver his people. And even though we just heard that seven days ago, it's still all of producing and inducing amen and the hallelujah. Amen. Because some of us have a habit and an addiction uh -huh. of getting ourselves into some mess and into confusion. Jesus. But y'all, thanks be to God that God is still able Jesus. to get us out of stuff that we didn't have any business getting into. Thank you, Lord. So let me do a survey real quick uh -huh. and see all the people who the Lord has brought you out of some mess uh -huh. that you never should have found yourself in. Yeah. But God is so good. And God is so gracious uh -huh. and God is so merciful that he decided to deliver you anyhow yeah. because he always finds a way to get us out of our mess. Uh -huh. And y'all, that's why I want to pick up this Sunday. But instead of going to 2 Samuel, I want to invite you to Judges chapter 6. Uh Judges chapter 6 verses 11 through 16. Judges chapter 6 verses 11 through 16. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak at Ophrah, which belonged to Joaz the Azabarite, as his son Gideon was beaten out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon answered him, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us to the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. Mm -hmm. I hereby commission you. Right. He responded, But sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least of my family. The Lord said to him, 
but I will be with you, and you shall strike down the Midianites, every one of them. I want to talk and teach from the subject, the promises of God's presence. Amen. The promises of God's presence. Amen. I want to suggest to us that one of the most productive and the most fruitful and the most powerful promises of the Bible is a promise that we serve a God who will always be with us. Yes. Because we can't get too far in the Bible and not be reminded of the fact that God declares from Genesis to Revelation that he will always be with us. Amen. That's why David tells us in Psalm 23 that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's why Jesus tells us in the Gospels that lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Amen. That's why the Lord tells us in Joshua chapter 1 that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the Lord was no less present with our ancestors and our descendants than he is with us. Amen. And the Lord is with us today the same way, way he was yesterday. Amen. That's how he reminds us in Isaiah that when we walk through the fire, that he'll be right there. Uh -huh. When you pass through the waters, he'll be with you. When the doctor says it is cancer, I'll be right there. Yeah. When daddy and mama breathe their last, I promise to stay right there with you. Uh -huh. When Boo Boo says bye-bye, I promise that I will never leave you. Because we serve a God who promises to always be with us. And y'all, it's that promise that calls David to write in Psalms 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I sin in the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Because we serve a God who is so much with us that when he makes himself alive in Jesus Christ, that he gives him the name Emmanuel to remind us that God is with us. And our grandparents and our ancestors believed in that promise so much that they sang the hymn that I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sinners breakers dashing, which tried to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of my Savior and he bid me to still fight on because he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Yeah. Because the Lord promises to stay with us. But as y'all, we can be honest on a Sunday morning. Yeah. There's some seasons and times that we go through yeah. when it seems like God is going back on his word. Because yeah. if we be honest, we've been through some storms in life uh -huh. that made us feel like God had forgotten about us. Yeah. Because we go through some stuff where it seems like the Lord is absent without leave. Yeah. And if you can't say amen, then I can talk for myself. Because yeah. I've been in some places where I've been so hurt. Amen. And I've been so offended. Uh -huh. And I've been so annoyed yeah. that it was hard for me to see the face of God. Yeah. And it was hard for me to hear the voice of God. Uh -huh. And I didn't feel like God, I didn't feel God like I used to. Yeah. I didn't see the miracles of God being performed in my life. Uh -huh. And have you ever been in that place yeah. where you felt like God wasn't there. Yeah. And I know that some of y'all are holier than the rest of us. So you can't say amen. On, but the Bible testifies that there's some people who got there. Yeah. Because the children of Israel got there uh -huh. when they were in slavery in Babylon. Yeah. And they asked the question, how should we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Because yeah. they believed that where they were that God wasn't with them. Uh -huh. The Bible tells us that even in all his integrity, yeah. and even in all his honesty, uh -huh. and even in all his holiness, yeah. and even with his fear of God, that Job still got there. Yeah. Yeah. And when he started to lose everything, and the struggle and the suffering, yeah. Job says that when I go forward, he is not there. Uh -huh. And when I go backwards, I can't perceive him. <laughs> when he works, works, works hand on the left, I cannot behold him. Uh -huh. When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him. So, Lord, where are you? And just in case y'all don't remember, Jesus got there when he was down on the cross for you and for me. And his humanity spoke out and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And y'all, I got a funny feeling that there's somebody in church on a Sunday morning who if you're not there right now, that you've been there before and you might be on your way there soon, but you've been in some places in your life when it seemed like God wasn't there. Yeah. And if you feel like you can understand that, then you ought to be able to find some of your kinfolk in Judges chapter 6. Uh -huh. Because in Judges chapter 6, the children of Israel had disobeyed the commandment of God once again. Uh -huh. 
And y'all, as a result, the Lord has allowed the Midianites to come into Israel and to take over their land. Uh -huh. And we find out where they're under Midianite oppression. That they have to hide their resources and they have to conceal their supplies. Yes. So one day a man by the name of Gideon, who was out in the wine press threading wheat, trying to hide their resources from the Midianites. Yes. And the angel of the Lord shows up in verse 12. And the angel says, Gideon, the Lord is with you. Uh -huh. But y'all notice that Gideon's response wasn't praise the Lord. Notice that he doesn't start clapping his hands. Mm. Notice that he, make, he doesn't make a joyful noise. Uh -huh. But Gideon asked the question in verse 13, that if the Lord is with us, then why is all this happening to us? Yeah. So Gideon hears the declaration of God's promise of his presence. Uh -huh. And he says, ain't no way that no angel and ain't no way that no preacher can tell me that God is with me uh -huh. when all this hell is going on in my life. Because how can you tell me that God is with me uh -huh. when we have all these enemies around us? Yeah. How can you tell me that God is with me when I've been laid off from my job? Uh -huh. How can you tell me that God is with yeah. me when the doctors can't find out what's wrong? Uh -huh. How can you tell me that God is with me when my family is falling apart? Yeah. How can you tell me that God is with me when my child won't act right? Because there's no way that God can be with me and I'm going through all of this. Uh -huh. And y'all, Gideon makes the human assumption that all of us make. And that's where you assume that the presence of a problem is the same as the absence of the Lord. Uh -huh. Because if God was with me, then none of this would be happening. And since it is happening, and since it is going down, that must mean that God is no longer there. Because Gideon is like many of us. And he's lost the sight and the sense and the security of the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. And y'all, let me tell you, that's a dangerous place to be. Yeah. When we lose the sight, yeah. the sense, and the security of God being with you. Because when we lose the sight and the sense and security of the presence of God, uh -huh. then doubt and helplessness sets in. And yeah. we believe that we have to handle life on our own terms. Uh -huh. When we lose the sight and sense and security of God's presence, despair and hopelessness takes over. And now we start to believe that the tomorrow can't be any better than today. When we lose the sight and sense of the security of God's presence, then we become indifferent and lazy. And we wonder why we even trying. Because God is not here and God is not present. Then this, and So that means it's every man for himself. And when we lose our sight and our senses, our security and the presence of God, It'll shake and unsettle our faith in God. Uh -huh. And that's why a lot of us have given up on the Lord. And we've turned in our discipleship. Because uh -huh. it seemed like God had forgotten about us. But I came by to tell y'all this morning. Yeah. That not only would the Lord always find a way to direct our paths. Yeah. And not only would God find a way to deliver his people. But the Lord will always find a way to show us his presence. Because the Lord knows when we're in that place, where we feel like he's not there, that that's a dangerous situation. So the Lord will always find a way to let us know that he's right there with us. And somebody's here today, and you didn't even know that you needed this word. Because I want us to see four ways that the Lord shows Gideon that he's still with him. Uh -huh. And y'all, it's the same four ways that operate in our own lives. Yeah. So you won't leave here on a Sunday morning yeah. thinking that God has forgotten you or that God has forsaken you or that God has left you. Because there are at least four ways that we know that God is with you. Because number one, you know that God is with you by the punishment that he's forgiven. Uh -huh. So we know that God is with us by the punishments that he's forgiven. Now, we've been together as congregation, as pastor, for almost five years now. And y'all, I found out that Progressive is the best church that I've ever been a member of. But y'all, in the time that we've been together, I found out something about this church that I need to tell y'all. Now, we've been together for almost five years now. So I've been in some meetings behind closed doors. I've been in some meetings on the phone. And I've been in some meetings in the parking lot. And y'all, I learned something about the progressive that I need to share with y'all. Now, I know that this is online. And I know it's going to be on the radio. But I'm asking everybody who can hear this, don't tell nobody what I'm going to say. And let's just keep it to ourselves. Because there's something about progressive that many of y'all don't know. It is not in our bio on Facebook. It's not in our history on the website. But I need y'all to know that this church is filled with some sinners. And I'm trying to tell you from up here to down there, ain't nothing but sinners up in here. So y'all, from the front to the back, 
This church is filled with some dirty, rotten sinners. And that includes that it one that's sitting in your seat. And y'all, I know that I'm right. Because the Bible says in Romans 3, verse 23, for all is sin, it falls short of the glory of your God. And y'all, what that means is that all have sinned. And then all are sinning. And then all are going to keep on sinning. Because this church is filled with some sinners. And as a matter of fact, we sin since we've been to church this morning. And y'all, it's usually on Sunday morning when we're trying to do our best. Because if you walk in here with a bad attitude, and you didn't come here with Thanksgiving, you've already sinned. If somebody spoke to you, Deacon Hines, and you didn't speak back, you've already sinned. If you have an issue with somebody, and you haven't worked it out yet, you've already sinned. If you wrote tithe on your envelope, and it wasn't a whole 10%, you've already sinned. If you've been rolling your eyes this morning, and smacking your lips, and cussing under your mouth, You've already seen because this church is filled with sinners. And y'all, the reality is, is that because of our sin, that we deserve to be punished. And I'm not talking about no slap on the hand. I ain't talking about the Lord putting us in time out. I ain't talking about just losing some privileges. But the Bible says in Romans 6 verse 23, that the way to the sin is death. So y'all, when I sin, I deserve to die. So now I need for us to take about five minutes and to think about how many times that we let the Lord down every day. Think about how many times that we constantly and we freely and we happily go in the wrong direction. Think about all the times that you didn't do what God put on your heart to do. Think about how many times that you sinned and count on the fact that you haven't reaped everything that you sown. So watch this, y'all. Because if you think that you've never seen God move in your life, and if you feel like God is taking his hand off of you, if you feel like you haven't seen God do any miracles, if you look at all the problems in your life, and you assume that God isn't with you, let me tell you how to know that God is with you. Because you laid down as a sinner, but you woke up anyway. Y'all acting funny this morning. So let me tell you again. How you know that God is with you Because you laid down a dirty rotten sinner But you woke up anyway Even though the Bible says That we deserve to die Now in case y'all don't know why that happened Let me remind you what the hymn says Because great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness And morning by morning New mercies I see and y'all, that means that every morning that we wake up, uh -huh. that we see new mercy. Yeah. So y'all, it ain't old mercy. Yeah. It ain't defrosted mercy. Yeah. It ain't leftover mercy. On, so we didn't wake up on a Sunday morning uh -huh. with Thursday mercy. Yeah. But y'all, we woke up this morning yeah. with new mercy. Yeah. Which means that in between the time that you went to bed last night and the time that you woke up this morning, yeah. that the Lord showed up at your bedside yeah. and he sprinkled some new mercy yeah. to allow you to wake up this morning because when God is with us we can understand all the punishment that he's forgiven but let me give y'all number two because the Lord is with us based on what he's proven in the past because Gideon asked a question in verse 13 that already had an answer to it because he says if the Lord is with us why then is all this happening and where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us but y'all notice the angel never responds to where God is because you asked the question where the Lord is but you remember that the Lord brought you out of Egypt Thank you. so you looking for God but you already remember what God had already done Thank you. so you don't know where God is but you can remember what the Lord has already done so y'all when we have trouble finding the Lord in our today we ought to have enough good sense to remember our yesterday and what God has already done and know that the same God who brought you out the first time is the same God who's going to carry you now and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but the Lord has been working in your life a long time God has been answering your prayers a long time. Thank you, Lord. God has been fighting your battles Thank a long time. You, the Lord has been making ways for you a long time. You, and you were sad saint to let a temporary season yeah. cause you to get amnesia and memory loss Jesus. about the ways that God has been yeah. keeping you. Because God has been moving mountains a long time. God has been meeting your needs a long time. 
God has been opening doors a long time. And y'all, if that's your amen this morning, then here comes your hallelujah. Because what the angels seem to suggest is that the presence of God has been with you before God even showed up to call you. So here it is for somebody. Because the hand of God was on your life before your heart was in God's hand. So the hand of God was already on you before you even gave your life to the Lord. So God didn't show up in your life when you came to church. But God has been operating in your life way before you gave your life to God. And I know that for some of y'all, that was too long ago for you to remember. But on behalf of the rest of us, allow us to testify that the hand of God was on my life when I wasn't living right. When I was in the streets and for the streets. And I wouldn't do what God was calling me to do. And I wasn't in church. When I wasn't reading the Bible, God's hand was still on me. Now I told y'all before that my college years for me was what they were supposed to be. And I look back now over some of the dumb stuff that I did in college. But when your teens and your twenties, that's what you gonna do. You do dumb stuff. And one of the things that we used to do was go to the club. Uh -huh. And y'all, this was before my feet got bad. So I could party all night long. Uh -huh. And after we turned 21, you know that we partied a different way. Because yeah. we had some libations and some beverages. Uh -huh. And y'all, back then, we didn't have Uber or Lyft. Right. So everybody just went out. And we did what we wanted to do. Uh -huh. And we figured out who was going to drive back to the campus yes. by whoever made it to the car first. Uh -huh. Because whoever got to the car first was sober enough to remember where it was. Yes. So now you got to drive everybody Jesus. home. Jesus. Now, y'all, when I look back on that, Jesus. that was one of the dumbest things that I've ever done in my life. Yes. But y'all, the Lord kept me every time. And he got me back to my room, knowing that I wasn't going to church on Sunday. Because the hand of God was still on my life, even when I was doing what God had called and created me to do. And how dare you doubt God now, when the Lord has kept you through some dumb and some stupid stuff, because he still kept me. And y'all, if the Lord was with you in your dumb and your stupid days, you better not doubt that he's with you right now. Because the Lord is with us in the punishment that he's forgiven. God is with us in the in what he's proven in the past. Yeah, yeah. But y'all watch number three. Uh -huh. Because God is with us through the people that he has around us. Uh -huh. Because what Gideon is about to learn in this next chapter yeah. is even though that you can't count on everybody, yeah. that there's some people who the Lord has ordained and equipped yeah. to stand next to you when the battle goes down. Yeah. Now y'all, you can't count on everybody. But the Lord never sends us in a battle or a test without ordaining some people to represent his presence in the time of your struggle. And I want somebody to know this morning that the Lord works through other people to work on us. The Lord shows up in the lives of other people in order to help us. That's why God worked through Barnabas to help Paul when he was struggling. That's why God worked through Elizabeth to help Mary when her faith was weak. That's why when the Lord worked through Aaron and her to help Moses when his arms got tired. Because the Lord always has an Aaron and a her to help us when we're weak and when we get tired. And to help you when you don't know what to do, the Lord will use other people. Because have you ever had somebody just to bless you in the right way at the right time? Have you ever had somebody to speak the right things to you at the right moment and you needed that encouragement? Have you ever had somebody to go the extra mile for you. Uh -huh. And they didn't have a selfish reason to do it. Yeah. But they did it out of the goodness of their own heart. Yeah. And I know that we thank God for a whole lot of things thank in church. You, thank because you. we thank God for the new car and the new house. Uh -huh. We thank God for the new purse and the new blessings. You, but y'all, every now and again, we ought to stop and thank God for the people that he yeah. uses yeah. to hold up your hands yeah. when you can't make it no more. Yeah. And to let us know that he hadn't forgotten about us. And that's why church is so important. And that's why y'all need to stop watching online and show up at church. Because when we come to the house of God, the Lord is trying to remind us that he has us. That's why when you come to church and the sermon is all up in your business. Because the Lord wants you to know that he heard your prayer. That's why the Lord puts you on the same road with somebody who just won't stop talking to you. Won't leave you alone. Because God can't let us sit in isolation. And he wants us to know that he's right there with us. So y'all, we know that God is with us uh -huh. by the punishment that he's forgiven. Yeah. We know that God is with us yeah. by what he's proven in the past. Yeah. 
We know that God is with us because of the people that he's placed around us. But let me give you the last way that we know God is with us. Because we know that God is with us through the promises that he's preparing. Because in chapter 6 around verse 12, the angel shows up and says, the Lord is with you. And in verse 13, Gideon says, if the Lord is with us, why is all this happening to us? Then in verse 14, the Lord shows up. And he says, go in this might of yours Uh and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby commission you. So y'all, in verse 12, the angel shows up and says, God is with you. In verse 13, Gideon says, where? Because I don't see him and I don't feel him. Uh So in verse 14, the Lord shows up and he says that you will defeat the Midianites. So the angel says that God is with you. And Gideon says, where? And then the Lord shows up. So notice that when the Lord shows up, Uh that the Lord makes Gideon a promise about what's going to happen in his future. So when the angel says that God is with you, and Gideon is wondering where the Lord is, not only does the Lord show up with his presence, but he also shows up with a promise. Because the promises of God show in the presence of God. So how do you know that God is with you? Because of the promises that he's made. And y'all, since God is faithful, and since God cannot lie, Uh and since the Lord must do what he says he's going to do, every promise is shown in his presence. And somebody's here this morning, and you're wondering where God is. And I want to let you know that you can find his presence and his promise Uh in Romans 8, verse 28. Because all things are going to work together for them to love God. Somebody's worship online this morning and you're wondering where God is. And I want you to know that you can find his presence and his promise in Psalms 30 verse 5. Because your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. Somebody's worshiping and listening on the gospel caravan and you're wondering where God is. And I want you to know that you can find his presence and his promise in Philippians 4.19 because he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If you want to know where God is this morning, he's putting the final touches on Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you want to know where God is this morning, you can find his presence and his promise in 1 John 3 verse 12 because it hasn't been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he is revealed Uh we shall be like him for we shall see see him as he sees us so y'all our challenge this week is to understand that preparation of God's promise is also the sign of God's presence Uh because when God is preparing his word he's showing us that he's still with us because the preparation of his promise can be seen in his presence so here's what God is saying to Gideon and to us because we'll handle what you're going through because I'll be with you and whatever comes your way this week next week and even next month Uh that you can handle it because God is with you and y'all when you have some doubts Remember all the punishments that he's forgiven. Remember what he's proven in the past. Remember him in the presence of other people. And remember that the Lord is on his way. And that's why he's preparing a promise for you. God bless you.